Hello, Khalees. We're going to take a look at your five characteristics posting, uh, give a few observations, let you know what we see. Uh, so let's jump right into it by sharing screen here. And so, uh, so what we do is we kind of start by um, doing a little bit of an overview, look at the posting itself, um, see how you did with um, organizing your images, whether you were able to label them in a way that seems to make sense, whether you put all of the categories together, whether it's all there, um, the general exposures, meaning are the images all in pretty good shape from bright to dark, or are some of them way too bright or way too dark. Way too bright means overexposed, way too dark means underexposed. Um, so as I'm looking at your images, it looks like we've got uh, temperature, contrast, hardness. The images look well exposed. In other words, all of the range. Uh, up at the top here, we went into intensity. And if you're also talking about the position, so you're indicating the, the uh, direction of the key light there. That's excellent. Uh, and you've got all the directions there. So um, all of that looks good. You know, this isn't really about like, you know, putting putting your thumb down on, on, on folks. The, the order of the five characteristics, it does have something to do with, um, with, with the aesthetics, with the way you work. You're always gonna start off uh, with direction. You're always gonna start off with positioning where that key light is um, in a lighting scenario. Even if it's outside, you're gonna be looking, where is the sun? And where is it in re relationship to where I am and where the thing I'm trying to make a photograph is? If the sun is directly behind your subject, uh, that's kind of a problem, especially if you want the subject's front to be lit. So you have to reorient yourself because of obviously you can't pick the sun up and move it. Um, so direction's always the first one. Then you're thinking intensity, then you think about the color temperature. So it makes a nice tidy acronym, of course, with DITCH, D-I-T-C-H, but it also represents the order in which you would typically address uh, the five characteristics. It's a tool set for you to, to move through. So you're typically gonna move through all of those five characteristics as you solve a lighting uh, challenge. It's a puzzle for you to solve. So let's start taking a look at the images um, from the perspective of composition. Um, even though this is not necessarily a composition class, we do expect that you would, um, you would incorporate the, uh, the, the methodologies and principles that you normally would, uh, would learn in your two-dimensional design class or your uh, observational drawing class and others. Uh, into this class um, and, and use them to create dynamic compositions. Dynamic compositions means taking full advantage of the space uh, to move the viewer's eye around the, uh, around the planes, around the, uh, the picture plane, uh, in a way that um, communicates something, in a way that activates the space. Do you want to communicate energy? Do you want to communicate peace? Do you, what, what is it that you're trying to communicate simply through the movement of the shapes on the page? So this is your first one. This is your, uh, um, what you're representing as, let's see, you've got this saying position one. And that's not exactly um, accurate. Uh, position one is not to the side and slightly to the back. That's more like position four is what you've got here. And that's okay, this happens sometimes where you get your, your positioning mixed up just a little bit. The photograph's outstanding. Um, you just have it mislabeled. Uh, the lighting direction from this image is coming from position four if you're moving counterclockwise. So if you're moving from uh, from one, then two, and then three, it's at position four right now. Uh, I can tell because I can see where the direction of the light's coming from. But let's just disregard that for now. Uh, the composition itself, you, you're activating the entire picture plane, the entire space, which is excellent. 
Uh, that means you're using from edge to edge. It's clear that you posi position this horizon intentionally. Um, you could have maybe let the bottles run off the top a little bit more. In other words, move the camera down or moved it in a little bit so that it would have cut those off. This is doing a better job. Notice how by cutting this off even as low as you did, it's creating a shape. It's creating more of a of a of a of a, a section between one space and another space. Uh, on there. This looks more like it's position one uh, than the other one. Uh, as we're looking at these different images, this looks like position one. This looks like the light is coming from very close to the same position as the camera, and that would be position number one. This is a simple thing that you can correct for uh, on, the, on the labeling, but this is an excellent job of using the entire position uh, again, this looks actually more like it's maybe position number two. I can tell that because of the, the, the angle of, the, uh, of the, the shadows. They're going in slightly at a diagonal, uh, and so therefore I can tell that the light is a little bit to, the, uh, a little bit to, to this side of where the camera is because it's producing a diagonal that way. See, here's the thing. When you know these characteristics, uh, and you kind of break it down to the, the kind of the, the direction compass. When you see someone, you know, make a photograph, oftentimes you can figure out how they made, how they lit it. Even if they weren't actually intentionally lighting it, you can figure out where the lights are coming from based on things like the shadows and the highlights and stuff like that. So let's, uh, let me grab that mouse here. I lost it for a second there. Um, so clearly we, we want to kind of get back in there and, 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 and re, re look at our, um, uh, our, our labeling on the direction because I think you've got a little bit kind of turned around on, on which those labels are um, uh, there. So let's see, intensity. So now we're, we're doing um, intensity uh, and I'm going to disregard the positions because it, it's clear that you were sort of maybe not quite uh, fully, uh, fully clear on, on the, the names and, and where those positions belong. So we'll, we'll clarify that for you though. Um, that said, um, intensity is all about the key light and then of course you have the, the fill light, which is meant to simply uh, enhance the shadows. Just kind of give a little bit of, of brightness to the shadows so that they're not as, as completely deep and dark as, as they might be. The fill light is always lower in intensity than the key light. So an image like this, you can tell you're using the two lights. You've got the key light, which is coming from the top here, you can see, and then you've got a very soft light that's happening over on this other side, or a very uh, low intensity light coming from the other side. This is an excellent composition. You've got a really good sense of, of rhythm in a lot of your compositions. This is It's, it's very good. It, they look natural, in other words, it doesn't look like you're uh, forcing compositions. They, they tend to look very sort of almost like you're just sort of maybe finding these compositions rather than uh, arranging them, even though you might have very deliberately arranged the, the compositions. Things like this on your temperature, uh, where you're able to pick up on this shadow, it picks up on the shape of the bottle and moving through like this. This is a perspective thing. You know, you had to kind of get into position and, and really sort of move the camera and move the bottle so that those areas sort of lined up like that. And that's not something that you do unintentionally. That's something that you discover and then you try to, you know, enhance and you, you move it forward. This is an excellent use of, sh of shape and overall space. This is an outstanding photo and uh, a clever use of, uh, of shifting the, uh, the color temperature uh, in exploring, um, exploring temperature. Here I can see you're using a little bit of mixed lighting. You've got the key light with the slightly warm, the Fill light is a neutral, so you've got the camera set to balance on the fill light, because that's a thin light right here, and then you've got the key light, the main light, uh, slightly misbalanced, which is fine because you're using it to deliberately warm up uh, those, those other areas. That's what the, the temperature was all about. Excellent. I mean, using shadows in this way, you're creating a mood, you're creating atmosphere. 
Uh, shadows are just as important to the photographer as anything else in an image. So I would, I would really uh, encourage you to continue the exploration of using shadows in your compositions. Very good. Doesn't seem like you're afraid to, to use geometry. Doesn't seem like you're shying away from getting right up into the image. You're handling your exposures really well. In other words, uh, your, your, your pictures look like they're spot on. We didn't really control the exposures a whole lot here, but even then some uh, of your peers did have a, did struggle a little bit with their exposures for some reason. I'm not exactly sure, we'll, we'll figure those out. But uh, yours look, uh, look, look excellent. Uh, some beautiful shadows right down in here. All of those things make for, for very good photography. Contrast is all about modulating the, um, the uh, difference between the shadows and the highlights. Remember, we were using the reflecting card. This isn't adding more light. This is redirecting the light you already have. The reflecting card is probably the most useful tool that the photographer has. Maybe the diffusing sheet is, is a close second, but the, the reflecting light, wow, you never want to be on location outside uh, trying to do a photo shoot without one because it's just so useful. Um, in the studio, we use them all the time to just to be able to grab some of the light that's getting lost over there in the corner, grab hold of it, redirect it back into our set. That's what we're doing here. Uh, you've, you've probably discovered along the way how you can really redirect in a subtle, subtle way. It's totally different than turning another light on, completely different. You get this really interesting, very subtle, very soft uh, uh, sort of redirect of light that is controllable. Uh, you, you're thinking, oh, I'm bouncing the light back in there, but you can really uh, use a lot of, of, of very careful control uh, by, using, uh, by using the reflector. So you've done a very good job on this one as well. Um, even here where you're starting to move back a little bit, uh, you're still able to handle that. Whoops. Uh, move back just a little bit, you're still able to handle the composition. So it's not about you're relying just on close-ups. You're able to step back a little bit. You did manage to cut these off just right so that they're not sort of hanging out, almost uh, cropped off. They're they're in, in good shape. Your, your compositions didn't just stay the same. You're exploring them all over the place, so that's very good as well. If it seems like I'm giving you lots of compliments, it's because I am. I think you're. I think this series is is very good. You're doing a very good job here. Hardness. Now, hardness is really an exploration of the shadows. As I mentioned earlier, uh, shadows are just as uh, an important part of photography as the highlights, as as textures, as anything else. In fact, some photographers uh, consider the shadows even more important than some of those things. Uh, I, I tend to use shadows quite a bit in my own work. When we're talking about hardness, we are talking about the nature of those shadows. Are the edges very crisp and graphic looking? Are the edges soft and feathered out? It can completely transform the way that an image it, it reads to, to an audience, whether they feel like this is a very mechanical and harsh scene, or whether it is a very comfortable, organic, soft scene. So soft shadows, uh, have a feathered edge, hard shadows uh, have a very graphic hard edge, and there's a reason to use um, either one of them. Uh, here I can see, um, whoops, again, my, for some reason my mouse is jumping all over the place here. Uh, here I can see that we're using a diffused light because the shadows are incredibly soft edged. So we do have shadows, there's right here, uh, and those shadows do not have crisp edges. This indicates to me right away that this is a diffused light. Again, remember I was telling you that, you know, once you know some of these principles, once you know the basics of how lighting goes together, you can not have, you can see an image, even a close up image like this, and kind of pretty much figure out what, what the photographer is doing. So this is a good job. I can tell your, your, your main light source is coming from, from uh, probably looks like position number, maybe between two and three uh, on here. Uh, it, it has a diffused light source on there. And then it looks like also you have another light source, uh, maybe a fill light that's not too far off of the intensity of the, of the main light source. Uh, and that one looks diffused as well. So it looks like this one has two diffused uh, light sources and they're coming from opposite ends 
of the of, of their uh, excellent use of, of, of diffusion. The combination of diffusion and, and hardness is also a good idea. That's what I think is going on here. I, I say that because I can see a very hard edge right here and I can see a very soft edge over here. And that tells me that there's probably a mix going on uh, with this. And you can see what it does is it offers uh, two completely different looks and offers more variety and richness to the image. So, you know, this, this exploration is really about getting you to know these tool sets and getting you to kind of uh, work with, the, uh, with lights in a way that maybe you hadn't thought of before uh, and to understand um, how, they, how they come together to form lighting solutions. Again, it's all a puzzle. Whenever you're ready to make a photograph and you're considering how am I using light, it's, it's just a puzzle for you to, for to figure out and the five characteristics of light are the tools that you use. So I will be putting together a, a, a grade form for you. I give out these sort of little uh, index card things for, uh, for grades, so you'll be getting that. Uh, you did an excellent job here, so I think you'll be fairly pleased with your evaluation. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing more of your photography. All right, we'll see you in the studio. Bye-bye now.